It was very clear. Nobody could even dare to rig my scores from Kano. President Muhammadu Buhari concludes visit to Kano State, says massive reception is a testimony of the confidence reposed in him. Each one has epitomized the finest of Nigeria's capacity for innovation and creativity. Two Nigerians get recognized for creative and academic contributions to national growth and development. Uh, luckily, there, there was enough, um, some good storage, uh, which we're releasing right now. Federal government reassures on fuel availability, says 26 vessels laden with petrol waiting to discharge. Plus, House of Representatives begins investigative hearing into alleged slave trade in Libya and death of 26 female migrants on the Mediterranean Sea. Good evening. A uh, warm welcome to NTA Network News. I'm Shim Olagunju. In Lagos is Ademola. Amenza joins us from Benin, while Abdullahi is standing by in our Kaduna studio. Thank you for joining us. President Muhammadu Buhari has reassured the people of Kano that his administration will not abdicate its responsibility in meeting genuine national aspirations of securing the country, enhancing the economy as well as recovery and safeguarding public assets. The president stated this at an interactive dialogue with a cross-section of Kano community representatives comprising traditional, religious and political leaders, civil society and the business class. Owal Salisi reports that the people were unanimous that President Buhari deserves another term in office to consolidate the change agenda. President Muhammad Buhari, who was on a two-day visit to Kano, assured of his administration's determination to improve on the campaign for the better. President Buhari, who said the federal government will continue to work assiduously to improve the economy, power and infrastructure, advised Nigerians to be patient to reap the administration's effort. President Buhari said he was touched by the immense support of the people of Kano and assured them of numerous developmental plans captured in the 2018 appropriation bill. Kano already has fertilizer plants that supply for the use in the state and even for the Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduje explained that the state government has empowered over 50,000 youth apart from the numerous projects being executed by the state government. Some of the community leaders call on the federal government to bring an end to the incessant strikes by university lecturers and health workers across the country. They also urge administration to hasten the completion of Ajakuta, Abuja, Kaduna, Kano guys pipeline projects as such will assist in improving the economy. In Kano, Awal Salisu, NTA News. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari says the massive reception that greeted his arrival in Kano is a message to the opposition that his popularity in the region remains unshaken. He was speaking at a state dinner organized in his honor in Kano. Abdullahi Mustafa has the details. Since the early hours of Wednesday, when the president arrived in Kano for a two day official visit, Residents line up along major streets to catch a glimpse of the leader and give him a rousing welcome. The massive turnout brought activities to a standstill in many parts of the ever-busy commercial city. This, the president, while speaking at a state dinner in his honor, observed, is an indication that the people of Kanu are fully behind the policies and programs of his administration. He expressed gratitude to the government and people of the state for the warm reception and assures of his administration's continuous commitment towards building a better Nigeria for all Nigerians. If the details 
of the election results are made available 2003, 2007, 2011. It was very clear. Nobody could even dare to rig my scores from Kano. It has been so consistent and I don't think I have uh, the vocabulary to express my thanks to people of Kano State. Governor Abdullah Umar Ganduja said the people of Kano have been and will continue to support President Buhari in view of his sincerity and patriotic disposition. He thanked the president for restoring public confidence in government through his fight against corruption, enhancing security and economic diversification. The people of Kano are proud to see you, are proud to identify with you, and the people of Kano, I assure you, from my investigation, from my observation, from our research, the people of Kano are solidly behind you and the votes you got 2015 will be multiplied in 2019. Governor Ganduja said the relative peace being enjoyed in Kano and other northern states has boosted commercial activities which prior to his coming to office were seriously down. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. I am now being joined by Honorable Farouk Adamo Aliyo, a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, to appraise the visit of President Muhammad Buhari to Kano. Thank you for joining us, Honorable. Good evening, thank you. The President himself was overwhelmed by the reception he got in Kano. How significant is this visit? Well, it uh, actually justifies that we have already hit the ground running. Um, and thank God the President himself has seen that. Uh, the people of Nigeria, not just Kano, you could see what happened in Ebony State, what happened in Anambra State. The people of this country are yearning for Mr. President to continue. And uh, we, we, we will continue to thank the people of Nigeria, not just Kano, for the understanding, for the cooperation of the whole populace mm -hmm. to Mr. President on the way he governs this country. And I think it's good for us, it's good for everybody in particular in the northern part of the country, where in Kano in particular in 2014, January, when there was bombings all over the place, where commercial activities were stopped, where people could not move. But thank God, thank uh, Nigerians that Buhari is the president today, activities are back, articulated vehicles leave Kano to other parts of the country, and there's little peace in the country. So we thank God. In fact, as I told you, we've hit the ground running. President is mm -hmm. running because we are running on, on his behalf. Yes, because the president even expressed um, confidence in the massive support he got from Kano. And does this mean now that people are appreciative that he's meeting the aspirations of the people? Absolutely. Because you see, l l let me tell you. First of all, he was very reluctant to contest. We had to, at one time, blackmail him to contest, <laughs> honestly. And now, thank God, he's seen exactly what we keep telling him. That, look, the people of this country are waiting for you. And he has seen that in Kano. I was told that Mr. President shed tears because of the number of people, people. that came out to see him in Kano. And we, we thank God, thank Nigerian people, that he's healthy now. I mean, compared to what, you know, the mm. stories, uh, you know, back. So, uh, we're overwhelmed. So, we're reassured the people of continued um, dedication to the campaign promises of the president Absolutely. and the party. That's exactly what I told you from Ebonyi. Don't even say Kano. If you look at what happened in Ebonyi state, even the governor from the opposition party mm -hmm. is asking Mr. President to please come and contest. This evening, I was speaking to a senator from the southeastern part of this country who has m come on television to say that we need Mr. President to continue from opposition party. So you could see that all the promises that we made to the people, we are fulfilling them with one third of the revenue that is generated now. We're happy to hear that and we wish Mr. President all the best. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for joining us Thank on you. the Network News. Honorable Farouk Adamo Aliu is a chieftain of the All Progressives Congress, APC.
Now, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, says it has 26 vessels of petrol on standby, while six others have been discharging since Tuesday this week. The management of the NNPC told the Senate Committee downstream on inspection visit to filling stations that about 30 million metric tons of fuel is coming into the country. National Assembly correspondent Rabi Musa completes the report. The management of NNPC, comprising the representative of the group managing director and the managing director of PPMC, said 93 million liters of petrol had since been distributed to Abuja and environs, apart from others distributed across the country, while the Department of Petroleum Resources had been directed to ensure 24 hours sale. We have told most of the depots that they should start immediately 24 hour service to double our truck out so that in another one week everywhere will be filled with product. But NPC still maintain what EPI has set as a cap, which is 133.28 uh, uh, naira per liter. NPC needs to tell us because part of what the marketers are saying is. They cannot import PNS at the prevailing contract given to them. The Senate Committee downstream, led by its chairman, Senator Kabiru Marafa, had inspected petrol stations in Abuja to ensure that the product is not hoarded and sales are ongoing. Saying that we are satisfied because we don't want to tell them that we are satisfied so that they can go to sleep. sleep. No, they must be up and doing. They have tried, but their best is not good enough for yes. us. Yeah, so we demand more from them. The oversight is expected to continue to ensure that Nigerians are not frustrated during the first period. Rabbi Musa, NTA News. So on the fuel issue, as part of efforts to fast-track supply of petroleum products to ease challenges faced by motorists across the country, the federal government is enforcing stricter monitoring of supply and distribution. Minister of State Petroleum Resources Dr. Ibe Kachiku said in Abuja that measures are in place to end the long queues. There was obviously um, um, some level of gap in terms of, in terms of volume. And that gap arises from the fact that NMPC is the only one who is importing a product currently. Uh, most of the people who were expected in the private sector to import product uh, were not able to bring in products. And some of them have pushed back on the days they're able to bring products into January. And so you, you have an NMPC rapidly trying to fill up um, the product requirement to 100% capacity basis. Now, luckily, there, there was enough, um, some good storage, um, which we're releasing right now. Now to other reports, the federal government is reviewing all properties owned by companies that have not filed tax returns. Executive Chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Babatunde Faula, while representing the Minister of Finance, Kemia Dioshun, at a workshop for finance correspondents in Abuja, said this is with a view to checking available loopholes in the current voluntary assets and income declaration scheme, VAIDS. Leah Katung Babatunde has the details. The Voluntary Assets and Income Declaration Scheme, VAIDS, is a one-time limited opportunity for taxpayers to regularize the tax status relating to previous tax periods. Available records show the total number of taxpayers as at May 2017 stood at 14 million out of an estimated 69.9 million economically active persons. The scheme seeks to extend the drug net to those who have not been covered as well as employers who do not remit after deductions from employees. These inform the training of members of the Abuja chapter of Finance Correspondents Association of Nigeria, FICAN. By law, if you own a corporate organization and you don't file any returns, we look at your turnover, then we take 20% of your turnover and tax that 30 percent. The whole essence of VAID is to ensure that the citizens will take ownership of the revenue generated and ask questions and ask for accountability. The tax amnesty program seeks to align Nigeria's scenario with global best practices. And the tax authority is not going to stop the activities now, saying that, oh, we will not work, we will, want, we will wait for everybody to take opportunity of coming on that VAID. Take the bull step. Let's tell the, task, the people around that things will not remain the same. Nigeria is joining the global initiative to tackle problems associated with 
illicit financial flows and tax evasions which have contributed to the nation's underdevelopment. In Abuja, I'm Lekating, Baba Tunde. The federal government has conferred the 2017 Nigerian National Order of Merit Award on two distinguished Nigerians, Professor Adesoji Adishino and Bruce Paul Onabrepea for creative and academic contributions that are of national and global importance. State House correspondent Gideon Ifadi covered the investiture held at the State House in Abuja. Since inception 38 years ago, the board of the National Merit Award has identified and selected 75 awardees. At a brief ceremony held at the council chamber of the presidential villa, Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo says he is extremely proud to welcome the two laureates to the prestigious League of Distinguished Nigerians who are bestowed with the highest award of the land. Each one of them has epitomized the finest of Nigeria's capacity for innovation and creativity. Professor Adeshoji Adeshino received the Nigerian National Order of Merit Award based on his feet in the field of engineering technology. His research works in the last three decades are said to have made groundbreaking contributions to mining, renewable energy, petrochemical, environmental and wastewater treatment technologies, defense and manufacturing. Onobra Peya is a well-known African artist and arguably the most resourceful and innovative among his contemporaries. He discovered plastography, a technique by which designs are engraved on plastic, inked and printed on another receptive surface, a technique now widely used by artists in Nigeria and abroad. His work has earned him over 30 national and international awards and appointments and is presently member of the Order of the Republic of Nigeria, MFR. Nigeria is a nation of great people and talent. Indeed, our human capital is the greatest gift and resource that we have, not our crude oil or solid minerals or land. Posterity calls on us, the Nigerian elite, the intellectual, business and religious leadership, which has the responsibility and we are called upon to work to ensure that this resource does not remain stranded at the level of potential but that it is instead harnessed and exploited for the good of the country and all its people. Posterity will not forgive us for, for doing anything less. The Vice President says the award is a tall order calling on the recipients to pass on their vast experiences to young Nigerians for a greater Nigeria. In the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. Now, our parliamentary conference on legislative actions for the containment of small arms proliferation and terrorist financing in the ECOWAS subregion is discussing ways of strengthening national and regional laws to curb the trend. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dugara, who declared the conference open, stressed the need for the enactment of laws to make arms possession difficult. Joseph Oroch reports that the conference is at the instance of the ECOWAS Parliament and the National Institute for Legislative Studies. The prevalence of violence, conflicts and political crisis in African continent becomes prominent since mid-2000. This has largely been linked to proliferation of small arms and more than half of illegal arms in circulation are made locally. This conference is to create a forum for dialogue and consultation among parliamentarians and stakeholders towards effective implementation of security policies bordering around terrorism. The Sustainable Development Goals SDGs are being hampered by the high level of insecurity in the West African subregion. The subregion has suffered from intra and intercommunal feuds, local wars, arm insurrections, arm rebel activities and terrorism all of which have led to the proliferation of small arms and light weapons. There is nothing small about small arms in terms of the effects of their proliferation. Small arms and light weapons are responsible for 90% of victims in small conflicts globally. Participants are expected to have a deepened understanding of the underlying factors responsible for cross-border transnational crimes and terrorism within the sub-region to strengthen regulatory frameworks against the prevalence of small arms. 
Joseph Orok, NTA News. A federal high court in sitting in Apo has dismissed a suit filed by one chief, Akimo Jujero, alleging that Mr. Benedict Peters, through his company, Northern Belt Oil and Gas Company of Nigeria, bribed INEC officials with $115 million to alter the 2015 presidential election in favor of former president, Goodluck Jonathan. Ali Utuko reports. The plaintiff chief, Akimo Jujero, told the court that Mr. Benedict Peters, the first defendant, through his company, the second defendant, paid a bribe of $115 million to INEC officials to influence the outcome of the 2015 presidential election in favor of PDP. According to a sworn affidavit by the plaintiff, it was alleged that the electoral officers who allegedly received the bribe have made confessional statements and have also had their bank accounts blocked. He also accused Mr. Peters of donating $60 million to former President Jonathan Campaign Organization in 2015, which is far above the recommended amount of 1 million naira as stipulated by Electoral Act. The plaintiff also accused the defendant of making the donation because his company was engaged in illegal oil deals. In his response, Mr. Peters denied giving a bribe to electoral officials to influence the outcome of the 2015 election, adding that the donation made was to the People's Democratic Party, not to former President Jonathan, saying there is no law restricting the amount to be donated to political parties. In his judgment, Justice Olukayo de Adeni dismissed the allegations for lacking in merit. He said the online publications the plaintiff relied upon is not admissible in law, because of its hearsay value. He said the evidence is clearly unrelated to the allegations in the case. The judge further said the plaintiff has failed to present a concrete evidence to convince the court. There was no evidence that he directly induced or bribed the INEC officials. And before the charges at the Federal High Court for Harcourt, no individual had mentioned Northern Belt or Benedict Peters. It was a well-considered judgment. I appreciate him for the industry putting their off. Counsel to the plaintiff says they will appeal the judgment within the next 24 hours. In Abuja, Ali Utukur, NTA News. Secretary of the Government of the Federation applauds developmental stride of President Muhammad Buhari. Details when we come back. Stay with us. His humility, trustworthiness, patriotism and love for the common man earn him respect of ordinary Nigerians. Muhammadu Buhari, the people's president, an example of uprightness, doggedness, and a believer of true and progressive Nigeria. Three years down the line, Nigerians have seen commitment and performance in fulfillment of campaign promises. Peace is gradually returning to the ravaged Northeast, and the entire nation is reaping from it. The economy is being revitalized with special attention to agriculture and other natural resources being fully explored to the fullest. The country is winning its war against corruption with looted funds being recovered to government coffers. Nigerians are saying, thank you, Baba. Carry on the man of the people. This message is from... It is celebration time as Kaduna rolls out the red carpet to welcome guests to the series of events lined up to mark the Kaduna Centenary Celebration with the theme, Unity and Progress in Diversity. Kaduna is 100 years since its declaration in 1917 as the capital of the then Northern Nigeria. It is a milestone marked by a series of events to celebrate 100 years of dynamism, diversity and development of Kaduna and its inhabitants in all facets of human endeavors. The celebration, which runs through the month of December 2017, will feature special Muslim and Christian prayers, lectures and exhibitions, musical festivals, horse racing, a grand derba, and cultural displays, the Kaduna Centenary Celebration, and together, we can make Kaduna great once again. Go find where I go buy UTM uniform for Juno. You no need to rush, go find where to buy UTM uniform. Because? Jam, don't locate them for inside your phone. Inside, inside phone? Jam, don't begin sell 2018 UTM form from December 6, 2017. Reach February 6, 2018. To register by form, text 
surname, first name plus middle name to 55019. Then go send profile code. Now this profile code candidate go fill when he they pay for UTM form. It they available for commercial and microfinance banks, mobile money operators. If you make mistake for your name, just text correct surname, first name, middle name to 55019. And if now your profile code you lost, just text resend to 55019. After payment, candidate go receive e pin. Now this e pin candidate go take go any accredited jam CBT center to complete online registration. If you don't receive your e pin or you lose some, just text UTM e pin or D e pin to 55019 and jam go send them back to you. Use your phone to buy your phone. Jam. Enhancing Academic Excellence. The House of Representatives Committee on Civil Society Organizations and Development Partners hereby invite stakeholders, IDPs, CSOs, NGOs, interest groups, and the general public to a two-day public hearing on the following bills. Nigerian Red Cross Society Act Amendment Bill 2017, HB 1135. Non-Governmental Organizations Regulatory Commission Establishment Bill 2016, HB 585. Date, Wednesday 13th and Thursday 14th December 2017. Time, 10 a.m. daily. Venue, Conference Hall, 23. Six new building, House of Representatives, National Assembly, Abuja. All memoranda to be submitted in 10 copies and a soft copy to the CLAC. House Committee on CSOs and Development Partners, HG39, opposite Deputy Speaker's Office. Or send an email to housepublichearing2017 at gmail.com on or before close of work on Friday, 8 December 2017. Chief Host, Right Honorable Yakubu Dogara, Speaker, House of Representatives. Host, Honorable Peter Patterson, Committee Chairman. Your perfect family is under threat by germs. Infectious diseases are now the world's biggest killer of adults and children. Every day, 16,000 children under the ages of 5 and thousands of adults die from infectious diseases. These infectious diseases are caused by germs. They are everywhere. An average human being comes in contact with over 1 million germs daily. In unclean water, dirty surfaces, in the toilet, on cuts and wounds, on your clothes, germs can cause deadly diseases like typhoid, diarrhea, flu, and cough. To protect your family from germs, use the power of Dettles One Cap Full for surface cleaning in your bathing water, in your laundry water, for first aid. To protect your family from up to 100 illness causing germs, be Dettles Sure. Endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. The House of Representatives Committee on Housing invites stakeholders to a two-day public hearing on request for memoranda under the following bills. A bill for an act to repeal and reenact the National Housing Fund Act Cap N45 LFN 2004. A bill for an act to repeal the National Housing Fund Act and establish the National Housing Trust Fund Act Cap N45 HB 891. A bill for an act to repeal the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria Act Cap F16 HB 911. A motion to ensure full compliance with the National Housing Fund Act, HR 59, 2017. Date, Tuesday 12 to Wednesday 13 December 2017. Venue, Conference Hall 231. Time, 10 a.m. daily. Individuals and organizations wishing to submit memoranda should forward same to the clerk. House Committee on Housing, Room 315, Third Floor, National Assembly Complex, Abuja. For inquiries, please call Musa Ali, Honorable Usman Babakita, Chairman, House Committee on Housing. Announcer. Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. Slavery is an evil practice abolished all over the world over 200 years ago. But today, human traffickers are selling human beings as slaves in Africa. It is your responsibility to make sure that you and the people you know do not fall into slavery. 
Don't believe fake promises of jobs abroad. People went to say Libya, Italy. Italy no use you. When they carry me on top water, four days now they lock me for inside house. No food, no water. I nearly die. Now God, when me heaven and earth, now save me. If you get one letter for Nigeria, you get junior one. You say you no get papa, you no get mama. Now make you come out. I beg go. God, they do farm work. You better pass where you went that road. Don't accept to travel to Europe through the Sahara Desert. You may be walking into slavery. Don't be a slave. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Thanks for staying with us. You're watching NTA Network News. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, says the Buhari administration is moving in the right direction and poised to realize the manifesto of the All Progressives Congress. He was speaking while playing host to the APC Non-National Working Committee National Executive Council Members Forum. Timothy Yusuf reports. The National Executive Council of the APC is believed to be the engine room of the party. About 20% of its members constitute the National Working Committee, NWC. The remaining 80% of the members therefore form the body, known as APC Non-National Working Committee, National Executive Council Members Forum, aimed at fostering unity as well as galvanizing more support for the present administration. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, recalled his days with them right from electioneering period. He assured them that the success is being recorded by the present administration in the area of the economy, security and other areas will continue. At the end of this first leg of our tenure, would do <coughs> an assessment and come to the conscious realization that we have done well by the kind of things that we would have achieved in transforming the lives of the people of Nigeria. The chairman of the forum, Nasir Rudano, congratulated the SGF on his appointment and pledged their continued support to the APC and all the leaders serving in various capacities. But the main reason why we're here is to tell you that we have the party 100% with you. The members expressed satisfaction with the performance of the Buhari administration in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf. News. The pains and feelings of abuse of human dignity that followed the story of the death of 26 female migrants and the allegation of slave trade in Libya necessitated an investigative hearing by a joint House of Representatives committee. Now, contrary to allegations that all the 26 girls were Nigerians, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking Persons said only two of them were confirmed to be Nigerian. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Onkwo reports. This investigative hearing by the House Joint Committees on Human Rights and Foreign Affairs followed the resolution of the House to intervene in the inhuman stories of 26 migrants' deaths alleged to be all Nigerians and claims of slave trade in Libya. Abdul Rahim Shaibu read a submission from the Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons on the number of Nigerians involved in the Mediterranean Sea disaster in November. When I finally arrived in Italy, I was informed by the Italian officials that out of the 26 dead women, only three were identified as Nigerians. Officials of Nigeria's Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Department of State Security called for more synergy in addressing the social problem. Whether you be able to identify the routes that Nigerians use to get into Libya. We discovered that certain group from certain state choose Libya as their destination. For Nigeria, it is a national security problem. And that is where the DSS is concerned. People have been arrested in Italy um, in connection with this matter. Meanwhile, Speaker Yakubu Dogara, who has been worried by the scourge of human trafficking, believes that the strengthening of local government administration in Nigeria will reduce the high rate of migration. Dogara was speaking when he received the Grassroots Development Award from the Association of Local Government of Nigeria, Algon, and the Nigerian Union of Local Government Employees, Nolge. And if we don't address those conditions by the grassroots, by generating more opportunities, 
certain ills that we seek to overcome may not be overcome. The union commended the House of Representatives under Speaker Yakubu Dogara for passing the bill seeking to provide autonomy for local government in Nigeria, which at the moment awaits the approval of state assemblies. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Unquo, NTN News. In the meantime, more Nigerians have been evacuated from Libya as concerted effort by the federal government, the African Union and the European Union continued to yield positive results. This was evident when two Libyan airlines arrived at the Murtala Mohammed International Airport, Lagos, with a combined population of 401 Britannies. Musa Toliat reports. Died in my presence. Tales of war were told by these Nigerians as they narrated their ordeal after disembarking from the Libyan aircraft at the international airport in Lagos. Barely seven hours after the first flight brought home 144, another flight from Libya arrived to the country with 257 Nigerians rescued from the North African country. I don't see traveling to Libya is evil. We are even supposed to be able to think about it. I'm back right now. Uh, um, is, to, is, to, is to make my country a better place. Senior Special Assistant to the President on Foreign Affairs and the Diaspora, Abigeda Bigerewa, and the wife of the Lagos State Governor, Abola Liambodi, ensured that the returnees were well received and stabilized. Now there's a problem with getting the detention cells outside Tripoli. You can't even get there, but with the AU EU intervention, order must be given to Libya to release all detainees outside Tripoli. Various international humanitarian agencies, including the International Organization for Migration and officials of Future Assured, the pet project of the president's wife, Aisha Buhari, were on hand to offer material support to the returnees. The victims of human trafficking will be living here for Naptip shelter. We have caregivers there. They will now, you know, be asked what they want to do. Some of them already have trades. So over until it is over. We ensure all of them get to their various destinations. They actually go through rehabilitation, go through therapy, and then we absorb them gradually. The federal government says it will continue to partner the International Organization for Migration to make sure that no Nigerian is left behind in the crisis-ridden Libya. In Lagos, Musa Tolia. Former President Ulusheg Mwabasanjo and Governor Ibikunle Amusun of Ogun State have condemned the alleged slave trade in Libya, describing it as dehumanizing. They made this known at the Controller General of Immigration Annual Conference held in Abeokuta, Ogun State. Lukman Adifeso reports. The former president, Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, frowned at the rate at which Nigerian youths in their large numbers crossed the Mediterranean Sea and Sahara Desert for greener pasture, but ended up being sold out as slaves by fellow Africans. He attributed the many to the actions and inactions of past leaders. He also called on government at all levels and Nigerian Immigration Service to create an enabling environment for genuine trading activities within and outside the country. Slaves. Humanizing and undignified what God has created to be dignified and to be uplifted. Ogun State Governor Ibikunle Amoson called on the management of the Nigerian Immigration Service to be more technologically driven, fast track the timely issuance of international passport, and increase the number of passport offices where applicable. It is the responsibility of the Immigration Service to shut out illegal aliens and those with criminal tendencies coming over from other countries. Not to stop people from traveling, but we will manage migration so that people can travel more safely and it will be of benefit to them. The theme of the conference was managing migration and facilitating trade and development in the 21st century Nigeria, NIS Perspective. And just coming in, President Muhammad Buhari has arrived at Dora, his country home, on a private visit after the two-day official tour of Kano State. The president, accompanied by the governors of Kano and Jigawa states, was received by a mammoth crowd of well-wishers at the entrance to Dora town. Leading the welcoming party were Governor Masari of Katsina State and the Emir of Dora, Farouk Umar Farouk. And time now to join Ademola for happenings in Lagos. Hello, Ademola. It's over to you. Show. Welcome to Lagos. The long queues experienced in most fuel stations in Lagos earlier in the week due to artificial scarcity have eased off as some petrol stations were seen dispersing petroleum products to vehicles. Abolade Salami, who monitored the situation, reports that 
Some fuel stations were sealed off by the Department of Petroleum Resources for under dispensing and hoarding of petroleum products. Long queues were noticed earlier in the week at some four stations in Lagos due to panic buying and artificial scarcity. The situation left some people wondering the cause of the sudden reappearance of queues at filling stations after a long time in the country. The situation has ever improved as most four stations. We seem to be having issues with our legal connection. We apologize for that. We'll take business news now. World Bank to consider $1 billion grant for Nigeria's power sector. This and more on Business News with Moplan Dakok. It's good to have you on Business News. The federal government and the World Bank have agreed on the presentation of Nigeria's request for $1 billion for consideration by the executive board of the group. In a statement, the World Bank said it is committed to supporting the federal government's past sector recovery program on which the money would be spent. The bank in the statement added that it recognizes the critical importance of the past sector to private sector financing and investment. The Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, recently posted that mobile money banking will enhance technological activities and reduce rural poverty. If carefully worked out, it is estimated that 80% of Nigerians would have access to financial services by 2020. Deepening financial inclusion through digital financial services like mobile money is an opportunity Nigerians need to leverage on to close the gap in opportunities in the financial market. This will not only reduce the burden of cash transactions, but will limit the huge cost government incurs in managing cash transactions. So far, everybody at the level of being able to participate in commerce, and I think it's important you know, for the growth of any economy. A CBN should have a regulatory framework that supports the growth of mobile money rather than create conditions that gives the impression that they are building branches of banks. We will pause for another break now. Please stay with us. At a critical crossroad. Only OGD can pull an inclusive platform like the PDP from the brink. And Otumba Binga Daniel can reposition the PDP to undertake this historic task. Let's reclaim the promise of our collective future again. Let's take back our country for our children's children. Support OGD for PDP National Chairman. Organized Grand Master. Democratic OGD. Let's start afresh together. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now through our technology. LG OLED TV. Get 10 times your recharge value to call and browse anyhow. Recharge to star 220 star the pin hash to enjoy this offer. Available to new and existing subscribers. Mr. Anansa, I'm in Badua. I want to follow you. 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 Airtel, the smartphone network.
season's greetings from FCMB, my bank and I. Meet Putty for celebrating the high points of life with friends. Ah, selfie. Just the friend that keeps you nourished when you are by yourself. Healthy goodness inside and now. Packed with healthy nutrition, nourishing vitamins, power of protein, strength of calcium, revitalizing energy. Hollandia yogurt is bursting with goodness inside and out. Hollandia yogurt. It's all good. Hollandia. The winning energy and great Milo taste. Now ready to go. Milo. The winning energy and great Milo taste. Now ready to go. Milo. The winning energy and great Milo taste. Now ready to go. Milo. Creative Youth Initiative Against Corruption presents CYIAC Corruption Busters, an initiative to promote culture of integrity in children, youth, and adults towards achieving global goals in 2030. Join us for the launch and movie premiere of CYIAC Corruption Busters to mark United Nations International Anti-Corruption Day. Date, 9 December 2017. Time, 3 p.m. Venue, Filmhouse, IMAX Cinema, Bisola, Durosimi, Etsy Drive, Lecky Face 1, Lecky. Le Visit www.cyiac.com for details. Download CYIAC app to join our conversation and watch live stream of the event. Let's join hands together to make our nation great again. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. You're welcome back. We will link up with Abdullahi in our Kaduna Network Center for more reports. Hello, Abdullahi. Hello, Shu, and thanks for joining us here in Kaduna. Smuggling of illegal commodities into the country is not healthy for the smooth growth of the domestic economy. This is why the Nigerian Customs Service in charge of operations Zone B seized items with duty paid value of more than 600 million naira in Katsina and Kano states. Mohammed Umar Ajingi reports. The federal government of Nigeria has banned importation of rice with the aim of supporting local farmers to produce a large quantity for food sufficiency and economic growth of the country. However, activities of smugglers noted to be thriving is being segmented effectively by operators of the Nigerian Customs Service operating within the areas of Katana and Kanu, as demonstrated severally. Just of recent, this truck intercepted around Kanu appeared carrying onions but had sacks of rice concealed underneath. Using credible information, we were able to get this, this, this brand of rice. You can see it's 25 kg. Look at how the whole vehicle knows it. So it means it's just customized, it's, it's just customized for smuggling. The effort by the Nigerian Customs Service has so far resulted to so many seizures of contraband notably vehicles, consumables, and second-hand clothes valued at hundreds of millions of naira. in Kaduna, uh, Muhammad Umaradingi, NCNE. And to education, our reposition in the Nigerian university system in tune with global best practices was the thrust of the 6th Nigeria Defense Academy Registry Lecture Series in Kaduna. Ahmad Umar Kudan reports that a lecture was an avenue for the military and civilian guests to synergize on how best to make the university system function effectively. With the theme, Fundamentals of University Administration in the 21st Century Nigeria, the emerging trends in the registry. The lecture was to serve as an avenue for cost specialization of ideas centered around making the Nigerian Defense Academy function effectively as a military training ground. Guest lecturer and former registrar, Federal University of Tuiki, by Alfred State, Suare David, was quick in enumerating emerging trends. The university in Nigeria must imbibe to remain relevant globally. Major General Adeni Oyebadi is the commandant of the academy. The bottom line is that we should all be open to current and new knowledge at all times. This is in tandem with Mr. President's open remarks at the recent National Summit on Education. What was the significance of the summit? The President aptly stated, I quote, 
it is those who acquire the most qualitative education, equipped with requisite skills and training, and empowered with practical know-how that are leading others. The Academy Registrar Brigadier General Ibrahim Jalo described the choice of topics as apt in view of the collective resolve to make the Academy one of the best. Kuduna, Ahmed Umar Kudan, NT News. Many thanks, Kudan. Network News will now continue with Sheon in Abuja. Thank you, Abdullahi. And we head straight to Benin, where Amenze is standing by. Hi, Amenze. It's over to you. Hello, Sheon. Thank you for joining us in Benin. Students of tertiary institutions in the country have been taking lessons on their role in the fight against corruption. They are also being exposed to the dangers of engaging in corrupt practices. It is a sensitization workshop put together by the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission, ICPC. Steve Lonai Wokolo reports. The Commissioner Olusheso said, the sensitization initiative, which is in conjunction with the civil society organizations, Congo, for students of tertiary institutions, is to discourage them from corruptive tendencies in the society. Students at this level of our education system should play a critical role in building public understanding for change. And representative of the Edo State Governor, Cardinal Basaki, commended the ICPC for its initiative. The guest speaker, Professor Edi Eragwe of the University of Benin, who described corruption as the abuse of public office for the purpose of private gain said it has given room for the recolonization of the country by the Western countries. We are supposed to be the channels that we bring ideas, that we bring values, that we bring those great moral things that we want our children to emulate. Join force with the government by sensitizing our own students. The Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Crimes Commission was inaugurated on the 29th of September 2000 following the recommendations of the former president, Ulushegu Abasanjo, in Benin, Steve Lona and Waukolo, NTA News. We're done here. It's back to you, Sheung. Good night. Thank you. Now, the Bauchi State Government, in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, have begun the aerial spray of trajectories and routing site of quailia birds in Bauchi State. Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed reports that the State Governor, Mohammed Abubakar, flagged off the exercise at the Abubakar Tafawa Balewa International Airport and some parts of Durumi Village. Boosting agriculture has no doubt remained a top priority of the present administration with a view of diversifying the nation's economy and attainment of food sufficiency. In order to achieve this target, the federal government through its relevant ministry, departments and agencies came up with necessary strategies to mitigate some environmental factors that are detrimental to the growth and development of the agricultural sector, one of which is the spray of trajectories and routing sites of quilla birds in the country with a view to controlling their destructive effect on cereal crops. The massive influx of quilla birds was experienced in last year's dry season farming. Consequently, the number of infested local government areas had risen from 7 to 17 across the state. Consumption of the dead bird should be avoided for obvious health reasons. Already, 37 sites have been identified and slated for the aerial spray across Bochi State. In Bochi, Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed, NTA News. We'll take our last break now. We'll be back shortly. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws. National, regional, and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies, including the mobile authentication service. For the last 24 years, NAVDAC has made steady progress in ensuring that the health of the nation is protected. Our collective responsibility is eliminating substandard, falsified and unsafe drugs, medical devices, foods and water. I urge all Nigerians to support NAVDAC in safeguarding our health. God bless Nigeria.
Let us support NAFDAQ to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. Sports update is next with Tamara Ibiwe. The International Cricket Council, ICC Africa, has pledged to support Nigeria in developing infrastructure for the growth of the game. The pledge was made midweek in Abuja by a delegation of ICC Africa who are in the country on a working visit to ascertain areas of collaboration with the Nigeria Cricket Federation. With us working with Nigeria Cricket, we can really you know, go up you know, to the top and compete globally. The maiden edition of Federal Education Sector Games is in progress in Lafia, Nasarawa State, with 12 out of the 21 agencies of the Federal Ministry of Education competing in 10 events. Deputy Governor of Nasarawa State, Silas Agara, who declared the Games open, stressed the need for improved partnership and investment from the private sector for the revitalization of the nation's sporting industry. Sport, especially school sporting activities, has served as avenue which facilitated the discovery of young men and women that have made this country proud. Ahead of its official launch in Nigeria on the 11th of December in Abuja, betting company iBet has signed a one-year memorandum of understanding with NTA Star TV Network, Star Times in Abuja. We want to go all out to look for young talents, particularly in football, that we intend to bring neighborhood sports centers, all the small mini centers in areas where we feel uh, our youths are probably going to need it. Over 5,000 Nigerians will be employed in the process as the company plans to invest in neighborhood sporting competitions that will see identified talents given the chance to hone their skills outside the shores of Nigeria. With sports update, Tamara Ebiwe, NTA News. Let's now take a look at Friday's weather forecast. 